With Inquisitor Martyr having come out just this past week, a lot of people are wondering how to break into each and every one of the uh, characters, or the backgrounds as they're calling it. Um, Inquisitors in the Warhammer 40,000 universe do come from a number of different backgrounds. You know, you have your typical kind of uh, Inquisitor who walks around with a trench coat, you've got some that are in power armor, and then you've got some sort of um, assassin variation, thus uh, Kaladus assassins and such, um, which are not typically associated as being Inquisitors, but they do... Um, some assassins are inquisitors thus of so let's go into our three backgrounds today we're going to talk about the psyker the crusader and the assassin and when we do that i'm going to flash up on the screen the skills that each one each one's respective expertise starts with because while choosing a character is hard in and of itself you have to then choose an expertise and these expertises look like it's just a different set of armor and a different set of weapons but they actually have different access to skills at the start of the game and different access to items as they progress through the game so let's go ahead and take a look right here so we'll start with the lovely Psyker here. Now, obviously, the Psyker looks like it's going to be like your mage type character and the such. Don't be fooled by any of these three backgrounds. The three of them all can jump into combat and get uh, dirty, bloody, gritty. All of them can, can excel at range. All of them can be really good at just hit and run tactics. So... You, some some kind of excel a little bit more like obviously the crusader is going to be a little bit tankier in close combat and the assassin is going to do more damage in close combat and the psyker maybe does better crowd control in close combat so everyone kind of th thrives their own way in every variation of combat on the battlefield of um, inquisitor martyr so let's talk about the psyker's abilities here or his um expertises as they're called now we'll start with the aether walker so we can, we'll, we'll take a look here at the actual class, Aether Walker, and we see that it has a specific armor and starts with a force sword and a force rod. This kind of gives the illusion that it is a little bit up close and personal, meant to be in combat a little bit more. And then let's take a look at its skills as well. So the Aether Walker starts with close combat, range combat, physical debuffs, I'm sorry, psychic debuffs, psychic combat, and hit points. Those are its um, initial starting values. Also, the Aether Walker has access to the divination and the telekines telekinesis portion of the um, um, Psyker's ability line. So they, they kind of get access to melee weapons a little bit quicker. They are meant to kind of be up close and personal, but it doesn't mean that an Imperialist can't or a Scryer can't. It just means that the kit is built from the start to be like that. Now, when you look at these skills, don't get discouraged. Don't think like, oh God, if I choose an Aetherwalker, I'm pigeonholed into this. If you see on these, each one of these skills, you'll see a bar underneath all of them. And the prog that's the progress towards unlocking that skill tree. So you could unlock theoretically every single one of these skill trees on your character it just depends on what character you're playing because you can see our aether walker his sing single dps the progress towards that is further along because it is a slow it is a a lower target a lower goal so you don't have to have as much to make uh, unlock the single dps for the aether walker for the squire and the imperialist that is a different story so obviously the the kit is intended to play a specific way from the very start but as you progress out it um, it progresses it unlocks uh in the way that matches that beginning but at the very end of the day you could play however you want don't feel barred by any of this and he's not barred by this this armor um each one of these classes start with one of the three different armors every single background has within its three its its three expertise um three different armors and those armors are not specific to any back or any expertise there to the to the class as a whole so i just think of it as classes and subclasses i'm going to say it like that because it's like the conventional way of doing rpg classes and it seems to mesh well with my brain but don't again don't be don't be worried about what you choose here choose whatever you want because it won't really matter in the end of the day because it all unlocks but if you want to be a close combat oriented psyker from the start i would go with aether walker now, Imperiist, on the other hand, is is more of your conventional mage. They are meant a little bit more for using their Force Staff for psychic powers, psychic abilities, and I personally love the Force Staff. My, my main character uses a Force Staff in one hand, and then a Sword and a Force Rod in the other, So you because you can swap your kits out from the very start. Now, the Imperialist starts with ranged combat, as you can see. 
psychic debuffs, psychic combat, and then area effects. You'll see criticals is unlocked on my, my uh, skill chart, but that's because I've unlocked it in the game and it unlocks for that entire character. So if I go to create a new Imperianist, I'll already have criticals unlocked. So it's basically like their their Paragon system. They also have uh, on the character select or in the in the character screen. There's what is essentially amounts to talents or something of the sort. There's three separate skill trees um, that are, are specific to each class, not their subclass, just the class itself. And the points for that transcend every single. Um, think of those Paragon points from Diablo th uh, two. Three, three, three. So it's the same thing, and they start. You start accumulating those from the very beginning. They all and they transcend to every single character you, you make, so you automatically have those. So I have unlocked criticals on my screen. Just please ignore that. So again, the um, Im Imperialist is meant to focus a lot more on their psychic abilities. In fact, they start with the most psychic abilities of the three. Um, you unlock more as you pro as you progress through the progression tree, as you can see, and uh, as you unlock that. You get different items, access to different weapons, and different um, abilities faster. So again, with the Imperialist, you do get that that quick and, and gritty jump into a, a conventional mage that's meant to be a little bit um, at a range distance. But by no means is this character weak. You, you, none of the uh, none of the characters are glass cannons in the sense that if they get hit once, they're gonna die. You can build them like that, sure. You you can you can forego hit points and defense and, and not even touch it, but you don't really worry because the majority of the time is they're going to close distance, they're going to hit you, it's going to either hurt or feel kind of okay. <laughs> but, I mean, the Imperialist has a ability called Fire Deform, which basically makes this big, huge whirlwind of flame around him and it melts through the majority of things. So, the Imperialist has plenty of, plenty of ways to survive, including the fact that their Imperian armor allows them to warp from point to point on the map. So you can be standing at one point, use the Imperian armor, and you'll jump to another. So it's it's a really, really, really cool thing. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no, this is the Imperian armor. This is the one that stops time. Um, I think actually the Aether Walker is the one. Yeah, so the Aether Walker armor is allows them to teleport around. So you can use the Aether Walker armor as an Imperialist, it doesn't matter. But if you want to use the Aether Walker armor to teleport in and out of combat, that could be used that way. Or if you use it as the Imperialist, maybe you want to use it to jump away. Or you can use the Imperian armor to, everyone gets close to you, you freeze them in time and run away yourself. So you have a lot of options and ways you can kind of soup up this list a little bit. So we should probably though, kind of move over to our third guy here, our Scryer. Now the Scryer is a little bit different. You know, they use a bolt pistol and a force rod and a force rod is not a close combat weapon. It is basically, it gives you ranged abilities and psychic abilities. Um, each, so the, this one gives you a ranged ability and three psychic abilities. This gives you again, one range, one psychic. If you use just the force rod, you've got, I think it's, it's two range, two psychic and the uh, sword gives you two close combat. Now this gives you, the bolt pistol gives you two ranged weapon abilities. Um, and the one ranged weapon ability and then the one psychic ability. So one thing to note here is that he starts with a bolt pistol. These two races, these two other subclasses have to wait until like level 10 to unlock the bolt pistol. So again, you do get a different progression meter. You do specialize and find skills, items, um, and gear unlocked at a different interval depending on which one of these you choose but don't feel too barred of, of course just don't feel too locked in because you're going to unlock it all eventually so it'll happen so the cool thing here about uh, uh, the scryer is they have this warp bound armor now what the way it works is that if this character actually has un they unlock an additional psychic ability is what that means it, it makes it it makes it sound like it's not like that. It, yeah, it's, it, I don't know what the, the description means. It means basically that they get an additional psychic ability they wouldn't have on their bar otherwise. And they have a, if you can use a, what's a focus is what's called a focus. It's a special item for these characters. Um, I'm trying to see if it, if it says it in here, but it's a special item for just the psyker. It gives them an additional psychic ability on their bar. So you can really ramp up the amount of psychic abilities you have, depending on how you want to build out. But let's take a look at the skills here for the scryer. Now the scryer is your single DPS. It's got range combat. It's got psychic combat um, unlocked and movement. So it's meant to get around the battlefield a little bit quicker, uh, just 
naturally because it's trying to get out of range quicker because it's purely meant for that range up uh, not up close and personal combat it's meant to get out of the way shoot 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 use those psychic abilities now this means that they get access to a lot of the psychic abilities that are ranged right out the gate so the other characters that have to wait a little bit for those or, or um don't have them till much further that's a different cha- different uh, story here for the squire the squire can Deliver the Emperor's wrath from range at immediate at, at an immediate time. So, this covers our three Psyker classes and subclasses. And hopefully this gives you a really good idea of how you can build out a Psyker. But let's jump into our other two. Uh, we'll, we'll jump into the Assassin next. And we'll actually, like, we'll jump into actually the very first Assassin expertise, the Infiltrator. Now, the Infiltrator is the close combat specialist here. Death Cult Blades and Assassin Power Sword. Now, remember, I said all of them can have a close combat variant. All of them can have a variant that's a little bit more specific to them, and all of them can have a ranged variant. Now, the close combat variant is, again, not... It's something that I can't take hits at all. So if we take a look at their, her abilities, she has close combat, range combat, support, hit points, defense. All is unlocked right off the gate. So you can tell she's meant to really, really kind of hold the line as far as for the assassin class. So with those hit, with those hit points unlocked, with that defense unlocked, she can get a lot of bonuses to her suppression, a lot of bonuses to her HP, to her physical resist, to her um, warp resist, her heat resist. So she has a lot of ways to stay in combat. And on top of it, her stealth bodysuit, which is again, not locked to the infiltrator, allows her to kind of really pick and choose the battles and get around quickly uh, without uh, having to s- suffer through a ton of damage. Now. There's a two-handed version to what she's using. She's using one that's a, a dual wielding, and it's really cool. That's her like kind of like phase jump, where she can like phase through a whole bunch of things and then attack them. Um, the two-handed variants almost always of every class have some sort of like jumping smash ability. So that kind of depends on how you want to play. Do you want her to be up close and personal? Do you want her to be kind of like whipping in and out of combat on always on like the outskirts, working her way in? So you you play this character how you want, but hopefully this gives you an idea here of how her um, skills work, because you can see from her progression, you can get you get an idea from, and I, I'm sorry I didn't do this with the psychers, but you get an idea of how to do what her progression looks like for, through the first eight levels. And that's really maybe the first, depending on how slow or heavy you're jumping into the other portions of the game, maybe five to 10 hours of the game. Um, but you can see, okay, she gets plasma weapons unlocked within the levels three and four. She gets access to um, a new close combat weapon at level two, another one at five, a sniper at six, a bolt pistol at seven. So there is a little bit of a hybrid to all of this, but you get an idea of, of what unlocks when, and you get an idea of how this progression will change, because we'll see with the sniper how different this is gonna be. But um, in fact, let's actually jump on over to the sniper next. Now the sniper is really that the long range specialist. Eradicator is more mid range, but but the sniper really, as as a name like a sniper would would suggest, um, is definitely meant for long range. And if you've ever played Heroes of the Storm, um, you are familiar with Ghost and her ability to create a hologram of herself. Holothic armor does the exact same thing. The wearer can create holographic projections about herself to confuse enemies and evade fire. So she's definitely meant to stay at range, and her skill profile would again definitely lead to that. She gets access to aimed shots, range combat, single DPS, and movement. Um, I can't recall if criticals are unlocked for the assassin out the gate because I've already unlocked it unfortunately. So I apologize if that's, this is kind of misleading, but criticals are not all unlocked for everyone. So the sniper is again, meant to be in range combat, meant to stay out, out of, uh, out of, range of everyone. So here's, she gets started, she's with a sniper rifle and an auto pistol. The auto pistol is her alternate weapon, not, she can't use it in conjunction. So you, again, you get the sense that the progression is somewhat similar here. So two and three, she gets access to plasma weapons versus the infiltrator got it at three and four. She gets access to a new sniper rifle at four rather than the uh, infiltrators, I think it was six. Then she, she finally gets a close combat weapon at level five. Now, there is a base kit that they all have unlocked to start with, and that matches pretty much everyone's gear. So everyone can use the, all these items across all the classes, but their progression dictates when they can get new unlocks for items. Because you can't use those items until you've unlocked them. So 
it does dictate the flow of item unlock here. But you do get a sense here that that her abilities are a little bit different too, because she unlocks like the she doesn't unlock the force field generator until level six, whereas the infiltrator unlocks that at level three. So again, guys, I, I'm trying to really paint the picture of how the progression is different from subclass to subclass. And again, you also see that you still get the same things within a certain range of each other. So you're not completely, you know, up shit creek if you, if you, if you feel like you chose the wrong subclass. But I mean, I actually, I enjoy the infiltrator the most of the three, followed, I'd say quickly by the sniper. I think the sniper is a lot of fun because the, the sniper rifle in and of itself, I think is pretty cool and unique. I enjoy the mechanics of sniping in almost any game, even, even a game like this where it's not like very, uh, in depth, I guess you could say, but uh, the sniper again is is meant to stay at range. All of her abilities, kind of the the actual ranged abilities of the sniper itself, um, kind of lend to staying at range. Obviously, but a, a maximum range. You can press T at any time in the game and see your max range from one one character to your enemy. And you have an idea of how far your effective fire is, so you stay at that max range. Now let's move on though to our next class here. The Eradicator is again meant more for medium range. Um, she starts with a shotgun and a sniper rifle, but that shotgun is really going to be her coup de grace. So if you take a look at her skill line, range combat, area effects, and defense are what she unlocks by default. And that gives you a sense here that she is meant to kind of be a little bit more of the crowd controller of the group, meant to stay up and close and personal, um, but also kind of dodge out when needed to support the the group from range um, she does have distortion armor which is a little bit different here it in fact, actually increases her speed so she gets like a little burst of speed to get in and out of combat so she can either get up close and personal shoot someone with a, a shotgun or bounce out and start sniping from distance so you kind of get not necessarily the best of both worlds because the infiltrator is definitely more of a uh, melee character but you do get a character that can that can stagger in between medium to close range or i'm sorry medium to to far range and at least try and benefit the group when needed so taking a look at her progression though we can see that she does strike that balance right so level two and three for the sniper were plasma weapons level two for the infiltrator was a melee weapon now for the eradicator we see it's a plasma pistol at two and a melee weapon at three then the plasma rifle at four and then the sniper at five so you see you're, you're kind of trying to strike some sort of balance between the two um it's not an exact balance obviously but you definitely get the sense that this is trying to put you in both roles the skills are a little bit trickier right so with range combat and defense sure defense you can really jump up there and, and soak up some damage but with ranged combat um you can actually do damage from range well since you can't do it from range it just it, it makes it it ramps up your damage from range quicker and area effects is uh basically hinting at the use of a shotgun which has a lot of area effect cone attack and area effect um piercing shots that, that do go through one unit to the other but this kind of wraps up our assassin here. Uh, I think of the three classes, this is the one I've played the least. Not by any means because I don't want to, but because I think I like the Crusader and the Psyker more from a, a purely an inquisitorial lore standpoint. I just think that they're a little more in engaging, a little bit more interesting for me. But by no means, again, are they not fun. Like playing the Infiltrator, she just darts around and kicks the shit out of everything. So it's definitely a fun class. Let's jump over to our last class, the Crusader. So adversely to the other three races or classes, I'm sorry, we'll start off with the Tactical, which is not a close combat variant. It, the first one on the other two is a close combat variant, but the Tactical is more the jack of all trades, kind of uh, interesting, interesting role. Uh, we'll take a look here. So let's look at the skill tree. So they've got range combat, single DPS, support, and movement. Now, I've this is the character that I play for my Crusader. Um, I recently actually just started moving moving up on my assault guy, but um, I actually played this guy in the beta too. I, I figured, you know what? Everyone wants to play the assault guy. Why don't I try the tactical duty? He seems a little bit different, and he is. He, he's really fun. He starts off with the sentinel armor, which summons basically a tarantula turret, which is basically this this turret that has twin linked heavy bolters on it that just unleashes hell on things. Um, it's so you can use it to enfilade a, um, an approaching enemy. So you can summon it on the other side of you, and that you get the cut and crossfire, or you can summon it a, a front of, in front of you, so that anyone coming down like the alley or something like that, they're going to attack that tarantula turret before they actually attack you. So you have a lot of tactics you can use 
with that tarantula turret. Now he starts off with the last pistols and the auto gun. Auto gun just kind of think of as an assault rifle. The last pistols are pretty fun. Uh, I enjoy dual wielding the weapons a lot. It's really, really fun because you have a whole bunch of variations you can put on. So you can use a last pistol on one hand and a plasma pistol on another. What's the point of that? Or when would you want to do that? But let's say you're playing up against any of the traitor legions. So the traitor legions are going to be your word bearers, your alpha legion, and your black legion. That's the ones I've seen in the game so far. So what that means is you're going to have, every so often you're going to encounter space marines. For the most part though, you're going to encounter either cultists or a corrupted imperial guard um, regiments. So with the last pistol, you can cut through the majority of the chaff easily. But anything that's heavier armor, your plasma weapons are really going to help melt that down quickly. So you can use plasma weapons to hit them hard. Or maybe you know you're coming into just strictly um, demons of Nurgle. So maybe you want to just use last pistols because the heat damage does more damage to them. Or maybe you know you're coming up against anything that's strictly going to be cultists or imperial guard or raiders. You can use two bolt pistols, which is a little bit better for clearing out. Um, those soft targets with low armor. So you have a lot of variations you can mix and match with the dual wielding of uh, pistols, which I really, really like and appreciate. Um, and then with the auto gun, you can use a heavy flamer. Well, actually, I think heavy flamer is only on the heavy gunner, uh, or at least unlocks it unlocks earlier on the heavy gunner. But you've got a heavy flamer you can use. You can use uh, plasma rifles, plasma pistols, plasma cannons down the down the down the way. So. You get a really good kind of mix and match of the se the tactical sentinel. They're supposed to be, or a tactical crusader. They're supposed to be a little bit faster moving and getting around the board a little bit quicker. So, with that, we'll take a look actually at my tactical guy here. So uh, ignore the progression that's already been progressed with him. But you can see pistols and force er, uh, power axe has already been unlocked. Plasma cannon has been unlocked, or uh, rifle has been unlocked as well. So you get a sense for the way that this guy is supposed to progress. Because the great axe is next, the heavy flamer after that, the plasma, or I'm sorry, the bolt pistol, followed by just a single handed power sword. So, not an emphasis on close combat, but an emphasis on staying within medium range. I'm not even super long range, just kind of that medium range um, middle ground of being able to support the team, bring in your tarantulas, uh, tarantulas turrets, anything like that. But I really enjoy the Tactical Crusader, and I think it's one that I don't think a lot of people are going to try right out the gate. Maybe they will because they see two pistols and they want to be like John Wick, but still, <laughs> I think it's uh, not the go-to. Well, in fact, we'll jump to the go-to next because I think that everyone wants to be the Assault Crusader. Starts with a power sword, a great sword, and a suppression shield. This is obviously the power sword and the suppression shield. Um, he also comes with assault armor, which basically allows him to jump across... Uh, the map and, and land wherever he wants. When he does land, it's a huge explosion that does a ton of damage. So it's really, really interesting capability here. And I, I actually, I really enjoy using the salt, the assault, not salt, uh, because it's a little bit, you know, I like tactical, but there's, uh, I hate to admit it, but there's something just fucking great about getting up close and personal and covering your power armor and gore. Because you just get to go hog wild on things. The great sword and great axe variants really have some really good AoE effects to really just do a crap ton of damage to anyone around you. Um, the suppression shield, if you pretty much hold down one, which is the, the there's two defensive abilities and two offensive abilities um, with, the, with the sword here and the shield there. Uh, the defensive ability number one just basically throws up a little damage shield in front of you and it'll absorb one shot. So you can, if you time it right, you can absorb a big one, but you hold down one when you're charging into combat and you'll absorb a good amount of shots coming in. So you get up close and personal, then you can switch over to your greatsword and you have to wait for the, the, re, the, the, uh, cooldown to finish, but then you just whip everything around you and does tons of damage. Or if you just use a great sword and use the assault jump pack to leap in and just do crap tons of damage, it's so fun. So let's take a look at their uh, skill tree. Uh, range combat is already unlocked. That's because I have it unlocked on my tactical guy. So please try to ignore that if you see it on this character. So you would have close combat, support, hit points, and defense unlocked for the assault guy, which makes a lot of sense and is really damn awesome too, because you're going to want hit points, you're going to want defense. Support basically increases your amount of inoculators, the amount of time in between your inoculations. So that way you can actually stay in the fight longer because you can heal yourself better. So support doesn't just support you, uh, the, the whole team, it supports you as well, depending on the situation. So keep that in mind. But let's take a look at the, the uh, progression here for the 
um, assault guy. And we, we remember we took a look how this unlocks for tactical and number level level two is immediately jumping into a chain sword with plasma pistol at level three. We saw plasma pistol was level two unlock for tactical, but they get a force field at level three as well, which is great because that means they can immediately start taking even more damage at level three. And by the time you get out of the little tutorial, first five, six missions, you should be level three or so. Um, then you get your great axe, which I think is even stronger than the great sword, to be totally honest. Followed by, you know, your plasma rifle, your heavy flamer, your uh, power axe, just a single-handed one, and then your bolt pistol. So you can see that after around level five, things kind of stay a little the same, but get a little different. Stay a little the same, get a little different. So it's like, I think level five is, is the uh, heavy flamer for the tactical, but... You see, you're always going to be within two or three levels of an unlock away from someone else who chose maybe a tactical or a heavy gunner over you. So again, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to drive home that fact. Play how you want. Don't feel barred. The expertises are not the way. There's no flavor of the month in making one expertise better than the other. Um, the little skulls you see with uh, books underneath them. So at level rank four here for uh, the assault, that little ranks, that little uh, skull below it means that it gives you basically an auto uh, point in one of the three talent trees that I said is on your character profile. So those kind of, I guess, color things a bit differently, but for the most part, these will play all the same, but with just different unlocks at different times. So try and play how you want. If you want to get in close combat, play the shit out of Assault, because you're going to get in close combat on day one. If you really want to stay at range, play Heavy Gunner. If you want both, pick any one of them and then slap on whatever items you want. Like you really don't need to feel barred at any way, shape or form. And I think that was the design intention behind all these classes. But let's, let's wrap up our video here with the last expertise for our last class of the day. And the heavy gunner is going to be that guy. So we got him. He even got a half a plate on his head, just like his tactical bro. So the heavy gunner is got demolition armor. Demolition armor is different because it's got these, uh, Essentially, like whirlwind rocket launcher pods on his back, and they do a ton of damage. They have, or had, a little bit higher of a, of a recycle time, so you couldn't use them all willy nilly. I think they've changed that now, but they they get up close and personal with that with that uh, missile launcher. That thing does so much damage, and it's really fun to use because you just kind of oh man, we're overwhelmed. Boom, press the red button. So I love the demolition armor. I don't really use it as much, but when I do, I like the way I look. So. He starts off with a shotgun and a las gun. Las gun again being a lot of heat damage. Um, it's got an ability that pierces through things and attacks stuff, just kind of in the same way that the Diablo three wizard ability of uh, like a, their 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 beam ray. I can't remember the name, but but again, the las gun is meant to wade through at range, while the shotgun is supposed to be close to medium range to deal out a ton of damage. So this is definitely going to be your your emphasis on two-handed guns and heavy guns, that's gonna be your um, your heavy gunner for sure. So let's take a look at their abilities. So they start off with range combat, area effects, support, and defense. So they're basically supposed to be just like a, a bastion. They're supposed to really kind of hang out in the background, be that kind of that centerpiece that everyone can rely on staying alive while dealing out tons and tons of ammunition coming out from them. They're really supposed to be those guys that are just pouring it on. Um, and that's, they, they fit that, their armor fits that, their unlock choices fit that, so you see that they're really supposed to, I mean, I, if I was choosing the uh, heavy gunner, I would immediately go into area facts. That's the way I would kind of play them out. So again, you can choose whatever you want. You're not gonna be barred, you're gonna unlock stuff. You can notice that the single, like you can see little bars below, below everything. That's the progression to unlocking that skill. And you can see it changes uh, from whatever class we're taking a look at because they, like again, they have, lower goals depending on the classes. Let's look at the uh, the progression for this. So they get the heavy flamer at rank three versus everyone else getting at level of rank, or, uh, rank five or six. So boom, they get that ass so fast. They get a plasma pistol at two, plasma rifle at four. Uh, they do get a great axe at five. So again, you do get some close combat elements in there. Your, your pistol at six, your power axe at seven. Then they get a plasma cannon at eight. So again, heavy gunner is meant to bring the noise. They are meant to just bring hellfire of the emperor from the skies. So you you do you definitely get that sense that this guy is, is really supposed to be that that one transformer that's always in the back, like yelling Autobots and just shooting shit all over the place. That's that's this guy. That is this guy. But hopefully, guys, this gives you a really good idea on how to choose a class and then subsequently what expertise makes the most sense for the, your playstyle or where you want to play. My recommendation to you, 
choose a class, get all three of them through the initial little, uh, all three subclasses for that class through the initial little portion, see which gameplay makes the most sense for you. Because honestly, those those first, I think it's, it's four to six missions that are basically the tutorial mission, the tutorial missions, they're so fast and you just get them done. They're quick, they're easy, just do it. Um, it, it maybe take you an hour to do it across all three. Just do it, and that way you can decide. And if you don't want to do it, play one that you think sounds the coolest, and then as you unlock, you'll have all the unlocks of your friends over time. Like it's you're not going to be barred. It just means that you're going to unlock them at a different time, different interval, different pace. So I hope you guys have a lot of fun with Inquisitor Martyr. I'm having a great goddamn time with it. I've been playing it a lot lately, so hopefully you guys can enjoy it uh, along with me. And if you want to see more of this content for Inquisitor Martyr, please let me know. But thanks for watching here today, guys. Don't forget to comment below on any things that you noticed from your your uh, first forays into class creation and such. Love to kind of have those uh, floating around in the nether sphere. But have a good one and take care.